hola all welcome back to soul mechanics so uh, this video we are finally going to get around to addressing the uh, legendary simulation theory and uh, my stance on it currently and perhaps in the future we shall see things are changing but anyways this is not my office but you can feel free to make yourself comfortable or just trash the fucking place um by the way uh, adelaide anybody who's been paying attention especially in the initiative page uh lady adelaide who turned out to have testicles and so thereby since she was already named adelaide and she was treated as a lady we considered her to be transgender which she just got her testicles removed uh yesterday i believe yesterday morning so um, yes, I have a transgender cat, Madam Adelaide, the shaded, she's, uh, here in the window, she loves me, I raised her, anyways, fuck the cat, sorry, okay, so, the reason that we're getting around to this is I saw, I, I missed it, it was a live stream, uh, usually I try to pop on the live streams with true life stories when I can, um, but, it's, I, I miss them a lot. Our schedules aren't coordinated. We aren't syncing up. Obviously, there's reasons for that. I did get in an argument with somebody on there the last time, the second to last time I was on a live stream. This dude was uh, exceptionally cynical and, and very pessimistic about everything and actually stating that there were evil people and that um, you know, basically that we should be hateful towards certain people because they're evil. My stance on this, if there are organizations that are causing the damages that we see, if there are secret societies doing evil things, you know, uh, manipulating us, and of course there are, there actually are. It's not just some wild fable or conspiracy theory. It's, it's really actually very obvious common sense if you just do a little research. But, uh, I, I, from from my perspective, I have to say they're not evil. Nobody out there doing anything thinks of themselves as being evil. But basically, just about everyone kind of tries to do the right thing for the most part, except for those that are scamming people, which we're gonna get to in the next video uh, in a few minutes. But um, those who are fraudulent, those who are scamming people, they're just they're just stupid people man they're not evil I mean they're assholes but they're a part of you so uh, the, the, the analogy that I gave to this guy in the live stream what I said was consider you look back into your past and you've made some pretty serious mistakes you've done some pretty shitty things you've hurt people you've stolen you've lied we've all done bad shit before I mean fuck me I've done some seriously fucked up shit in my past so you look back on it and you consider, you know, the reasons why you did it and whatnot. And you look at that as being a piece of yourself that perhaps no longer exists. You've addressed that value, that aspect of yourself, and you've discarded it, right? Because it doesn't suit you, it doesn't serve you, it's just, it's bad. So you, you get rid of it. But do you think of it as being evil? Do you look back on your past mistakes and say that was me doing evil or do you believe you had uh, somewhat justifiable reasons at the time which you know of course he he said no I don't think of my past self as being evil for making mistakes and of course that is precisely what is happening with these secret societies they are a piece of your psyche you guys got to try and start living actually living the reality that we are all one it's not, I mean, it's, it's an indisputable fact. We're all connected, we're all part of one organism. We are all, I mean, realize it, live it. Stop forgetting that. That simple. Anyway, 441, damn. Okay, the, the live stream earlier, the, I think, I believe it was probably the last one that True Life Stories posted. I'll give you a link for it to go check it out was uh the the title was something along the lines of what what is our reason for being 
dot dot who created the simulation okay this right then and there I don't need to watch the, the I'll, I will watch the live stream I haven't watched it yet but I don't, I don't need to okay you put that title in there speaking of Booker now you you chose that title you wrote that now what does that say take a, a take a closer look at it be a spotter what are the values you're putting into play with that title what is our reason for being who created the sim you, you've associated these two questions now and what you're doing is you're suggesting that somebody else created our world and that they would give us our reason for being that our reason for being is somehow defined by the characteristics that these simulation creators have put into play now the fact that you're going to go ahead and think I'm, I'm not sure if, if Booker thinks or they think that this is a simulation this world is, is like a computer simulation I'm not sure if they actually think that I, it's cool to dabble with the theory for sure it, it's a good theory to kick around it makes sense to some extent but really ultimately it's just the same theory that we've always had the elder traditions have always stated very clearly that this world is an illusion in every way and in so many ways our environmental crisis series that Cheeks and I are doing is addressing that directly wherein we are in fact living in a fucking artificial reality the, the, the newer generations they're growing up in a an actual artificial reality wherein they built these psychological constructs that are fictitious that are entirely fictitious yet they allow for them to define their very experience I mean we're gonna get deep into that this investigation is a good one uh, we got a lot of good leads so, so pay attention to that guys fucking tune into that it's gonna be great it's gonna be really great trust me uh, we're gonna take on and take down some heavyweights in the YouTube arena anyways my stance on the simulation theory I think that it is absurd totally fucking ridiculous I'll tell you why so we have a few theories that go, that bring this to bear that bring this stimulation theory to bear and uh, initially the origins are from science fiction works which that's going to be the strongest theory in my sight that leads to it is just simply that a lot of writers have, have come up with the concept that we live in an artificial reality or that we can create a virtual reality and be living in it, that we might be simulated or living in a simulation. Uh, obviously, there's shit like The Matrix, The 13th Floor. You know, these stories have been around forever and ever since the beginning of sci-fi works. So people just, uh, basically, they, the question is, what if that's true, right? And that becomes the theory in and of itself. Now, actually, it is not at all uncommon, in fact, most science fiction ideas do eventually turn out to be correct or come true. So, like I said, that's going to be the strongest theory in my mind, but it still doesn't fit with what I'm thinking, so I'm still in disagreement with it. I'll get to why in a moment. But the major theory that we have in play, um, introduced by some Bostrom character, a guy named Bostrom. I don't know much about him. I just know his works in this in this area, what he's proposed and presented. And according to Bostrom, for the most part, um, the theory is pretty much that with the with the measure of technology as it stands, how um, you know how uh, what's the word? how sophisticated our technology is and is becoming and, and the rate at which it is becoming more and more sophisticated and effective and especially the direction that we're taking it with such things as virtual reality headsets and whatnot, virtual reality games seriously uh, that it's very likely that in the future at some point we will be able to create a simulated world that is entirely indistinguishable from the real world Thereby, because we will be able to create that in the future, it seems, we must be living in one now. That, that's the theory. And, and then he goes so far even thereby, thereafter, to state that um, a kind of sidebar conclusion to his theory is that 
if you do not think that we are, and I've, I've posted a pic of this, I'm gonna have posted a pic of this back in the future before now. He says that if you do not think that we are living in a simulation right now, then you are not entitled to believe that our forebears will create such a simulation. And I'm, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, are you fucking serious? Okay, so ultimately, you said that because we might be able to create a simulation in the future, we must be living in one now. Hands down, no question. And then, also, if you don't believe this, you're not entitled to think that we will have this technology in the future. Like, I'm going to have to give my opinion on this Bostrom character. I think I would have to say, just from what I've read about this particular topic, is that this Bostrom guy is a very, very clever imbecile. Like, I mean, who the fuck are you kidding, dude? You've basically, you've said nothing. You've not, you haven't even really raised a hypothesis. You just, you've made a suggestion that actually doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever. And then you've actually gone so far as to conclude that it must be the case or there are neg detrimental consequences for not not accepting that like gee, it's just what the fuck are you talking about man anybody who, who anybody who's into this simulation theory I need for you to go ahead and research it a little go ahead and look into where it comes from what the suggestions may are especially just Boston suggestions and see if you still buy it A B I have to ask, if we are living in a simulated reality, if this is a simulation, it is a simulation of what? This is, this is everything. We don't know anything else beyond or outside of this. We all have ideas, we all have fanciful concepts about what might lie beyond the stretches of, the re of reality as we know it and the infinite expanse of the universe, but what the fuck would they be simulating because that's that's it that's that's everything so what are you what are you comparing this to what world would simulate this world and for what reason do you seriously think that people would put <laughs> that we would we would go through all the pains and and the pays uh, put in the budget to create such a thing and, and if so, why? I mean, okay, there might be scenarios wherein that's a reasonable consideration, but those scenarios are very dark. And, and the, the implications that are put into play by considering this, this sort of, uh, this sort of circumstances that would happen are not good. So, I mean, look at the Matrix. Why did they make the Matrix? Who made the Matrix? What happened? I mean, these are very dark, dark ideas to have. They're not good. Um, and again, we know that our decision, our discernment, what we know makes reality happen. So we want to try and avoid the darker more damaging concepts, conceptual constructions of what the world might be, that's a pretty fucking big value to throw out. That defines your reality. I mean, that's going to be the baseline foundation for everything you experience at that point if you accept this theory as being true, or you even consider it. And then the implications attached to that are extremely dangerous. So. I'd have to advise against that. However, I did experience a virtual reality headset with Boo. We talked about this in the other video. And that shit was so fucking wild. It was like I could see a little hand in front of me and I could move this hand around and I could like press the fingers and shit and I shook some girl's hand, her head popped up and her hand was out. There were like uh, people with, there were hot dancer, naked hot dancer, like hentai girls with these big wings demon wings up in the fucking top of the this strip club they were floating around up there there was a naked marge simpson with a bottle of jack daniels walking around there was just there were naked hentai like jet jet japanime uh dancers all over the fucking place 
I mean, it was fucking nuts, dude. It was like when you move your head, you can actually look at something and get closer to it and see the definition in it. It doesn't get like pixelated. It actually like it's like um, where the technology that came into play with Metal Gear with uh, Sons of Liberty when they made uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty, they brought an engine into play that allowed for you to actually gain definition uh, by magnification. So you could look at something and instead of it pixelating, you'd actually see the definition of it. And this is what's happening with this VR and it's fucking crazy. And that technology in and of itself right there, that, that definition by magnification technology, that engine, that there's so much that that can do, and and in fact, it's it's not just creating defined, uh, you know, areas, uh, the three dimensional, the four dimensional rather areas that you can explore and view. There's a lot that that definition by magnification, concentration technology can accomplish that makes it perfectly viable. Uh, that that such a thing could could transpire that we could yes very much make a simulated reality i mean when i went into that vr it was indistinguishable it was like i couldn't tell the fucking difference when i came out of it i mean it was like cartoony it was hentai girls and shit but it was so perfectly defined it was like holy shit and i could actually move around and look at it i mean this fucking was like seriously like a hardcore acid trip when i took that fucking vr helmet off everything seemed like fake to me i was like holy shit this is so it, it's bizarre anybody who hasn't tried the vr the actual vr like the uh whatever it's called the oculus i think it's called oculus rift or something the one that i used but um anyways so getting back to the i that for, for um, all intents and purposes, that shapes my discernment about this a little bit. Like I'm saying, it's a possibility. It's certainly a possibility. and it's, it's, But it, at this point, as it stands, the values that are attached to that possibility, that potentiality of us being in a simulated reality, us being simulations, it's not, it, it's not adaptable. We can't use it. It's no good. So, I mean, I just... I. Who knows? I might be wrong, but I rarely am, and I would really have to heavily suggest against buying into that that concept. It's, it seems like more like just a gimmick, and and obviously this Bostrom character, who is the you know at the lead uh, of of the theory for this, is is a con man, like that. What he says there, everything he says in his theories is bullshit, is a scam, like face value. It's it's an obvious scam. So, but getting back to the initial reason for the video, Booker asked, what is our reason for being and who created the simulation? Thereby associating these two properties, suggesting that whomever created the simulation is responsible for giving us our reason for being, like we don't have a reason of our own. Uh, we're just what? We're just simulations? We're all just simulations? I mean, here's the thing. Who, if somebody created this world as a simulation, if that's the case, they're not gods. They're computer graphics designers. They're just people. So, I mean, it, when you ask somebody else to give you your reason for being, that's what we call worship. I'm not going to worship people who made a computer simulation and tricked me into thinking that it's real, if that's the case. I mean, I've been through really bad shit. To, to go ahead and believe that somebody put me through this intentionally as a part of like a game, and I'm not even real, that's what it's suggesting there, that this concept of us being a simulation, that I'm not real. I'm real. And who, if somebody created this world, whoever they are, even God itself, they're just fucking people. They're just people. I'm not going to give them worship, ever. And they do not decide what my reason for being as I decide my reason. Nobody else. People, people give me reasons, as I said in a statement with Miguel and a friend of his, uh, psych major, shout out to him, he's a cool guy. Uh, and Miguel Angel, obviously, shout out to both of them. I love you, Hermano, you're my 
You're, you're my fucking brother, man. I love you, Miguel. Psych major. I don't know you yet, but I've been watching you, and I do want you on the team if you're interested. But, as I said to them, you know, other people back me, they give me impression. That is to say, people allot me a reasoning. Other people give me reasons to be for them. But they don't decide it. I decide to own that reason. I decide to own this life. I decide to be the owner of my reality and my experience. And I decide what my fucking reason is. And I am never going to say that some asshole who created a fucking computer game, as, as awesome as it may be, is going to be my, you know, God, so to speak. So, seriously, to, to address that directly, the fact that I can ask that question, the fact that I can raise this suggestion, the fact that I can go ahead and say I'm responsible for my reason, I don't, if somebody made this, they can kiss my ass, they can kiss my fucking ass, the fact that I can do that proves that I am a real person and this is not a simulation. I'm not a simulation. Because if it is a simulation, I'm breaking the fuck out of it as I have so many other circumstances of the sort. So, I guess that, that's really all I can say in it. My stance remains the same. It's, it's absurd. It's an absurd idea to have. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. It just it doesn't play at all. It's a bad idea. So, for now. However, the virtual reality thing is beginning to convince me, of course, that it is entirely possible. So, I'm not going to dismiss it outright. I'm just going to say that's my feelings on it. It doesn't make any sense to me. And the theories that are presented to propose it in the first place don't make any fucking sense at all. So, that's it. Thank you all for watching. Kila Salai. Tervei Unisiari. Namaste.